All right, greetings educators. Uh, this is your final project lecture and the topic of it is mini lectures. Um, we are going to uh, be doing a project in this class and uh, you'll find the directions to the project in your module and uh, I'm not going to go over those here. I'm going to talk to you in this presentation about mini lectures. Um, one of the objectives of this course is to get you to use more technology and that includes video, audio, and digital presentation. Um, the purpose of this is that to get you to inject yourself and your personality into an online course. Um, I I've said this over and over again, and I, you know, I sound like a broken record, but there's much research about how creating an emotional connection for students in their online courses helps improve, re improve retention. And so, um, they feel more of an emotional connection to a course where they see their faculty members. And so I hope that uh, you begin to think about how you can interject yourself into a classroom uh, with these mini lectures. And so our final project is designed to help you do that. Um, I was introduced to the concept of short pointed lectures back in 2006 while attending a conference. One of the topics of the breakout session was on lecture capture, which is a full capture of a, of a, which is a lecture of a full cap, which is a capture of a full lecture. And so, um, after the, the presentation was over, we began to have a conversation, um, about the purpose of these full uh, lectures. And so one of the things that we came away with is why are we giving our online students a full lecture when they can read the course materials? And so in this conversation, we came up with uh, ideas to create shorter lectures that covered key topics, ancillary information, and, sp and special descriptions. Um, a few years later, the formal term mini lecture uh, was introduced to online learning. And I believe that many lectures are highly valuable in an online class. I've told you that over and over again. Uh, so let me talk to you about some of the various tools that you can use and then I will begin to give you a formal description of the mini lectures. And the reason why I'm going to go over the, the products first is because I want you to begin to think about the possibilities um, while you're uh, learning about the nuts and bolts of mini lectures themselves. You've seen some of those possibilities and I'm going to highlight those when I talk to you uh, about these products. Okay, so Jean uh, is the first one on the list and um, all of these products right here are Web 2.0 and they're free internet based products. Uh, to use for capturing lecture, screen capture, and audio capture. And that, like I said, the first one on the list is G, um, and it's a screen capture audio recording software. And it might even have the picture in picture in the same way that a Screencast-O-Matic does, how you see my recording and you see the screen. But I haven't used it, so I'm not sure. Charlie Adams uses this extensively, and so uh, he just he, he thinks it's a wonderful product in the same way that I think Screencast-O-Matic is a wonderful product. So, really, what you need to do is to is explore them all and decide what's best for you. All right. So the next thing on the list is SoundCloud, and I have used SoundCloud uh, in the prison ministry that work that I do to send uh, people short audio messages. Um, but I've never used it on online learning. So, um, but it works beautifully. You just record and then you share the link. Um, next on the list is Screencast-O-Matic and you see me using that throughout this course. Uh, this is um, easy to use. All you do is start the software to record. You go through your presentation and then you upload it to YouTube and then you share that YouTube link. Uh, and I know that I will go through these very fast, but pro I promise you, after you um, 
get to using one of these, you become good at it and it becomes second nature. And you can actually, it actually takes longer to write the, the lecture script than it does to do the recording. So anyway, um, the, the last one on the list is VoiceThread. And I love VoiceThread. It was my favorite for a long time. Um, to me, it's the easiest to use. You upload a PowerPoint that has been saved as a PDF file, and then you click on it and start recording. And once you're done, all you do is share that link. Um, in addition to VoiceThread being used throughout this course, I think I used it in Module 4 and 5, um, this product can be used outside of Canvas uh, to do a class discussion. And how that works is um, you can share the link with your students and ask them to record their comments in VoiceThread and all, everyone in the class can see those comments and then you can also moderate those comments. So I love VoiceThread. I hope that you get a chance to explore it. Um, all of these products on this page are free, have free, free versions or you can upgrade to um, um, paid versions that have give you access to more features. Um, there are many types of these products on the internet and really what I'm saying is find one that suits you best. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is presentation tools and this is a little bit different or it can be similar. Um, I have used straight PowerPoint in this class but at some point want to take my PowerPoints and put them into Prezi and jazz them up a little bit and then uh, it use Screencast-O-Matic to do this, the capture of that presentation. But for now, I'm PowerPointing it because uh, we had to put this class together relatively quickly. Okay, so here we go. On the first one on the page is Prezi, and uh, it is a product that lets you create dynamic, unconventional presentations. Um, it can be a great tool to use along with Screencast-O-Matic or Gene, where you walk through the presentation while recording it. The next one on the list is SlideShare and SlideRocket, and they can be used in a similar way. I have used SlideShare, but I've not used SlideRocket. Um, and that those are also uh, presentation places that are cloud-based where you can put your presentation out there on the web and share it with people. It gives you a link share. Um, Juxt calls themselves a site to use for storytelling with images, audio, and video. I have not used Juxt, but it looks like an interesting site and I will be exploring it when I get a chance. Okay, uh, There are 19 different presentations, oh there's a link down there, I'm sorry, to 19 different presentation tools that are free. Uh, if you want to know more about these free uh, presentation tools, just Google 19 free presentation tools and it comes up uh, on the list and I'm also going to put a link in your uh, resources uh, page for this module. Okay, so next I want to begin to lay out to you what a mini lecture is. And like I said before, the reason why I gave you an idea of what's possible before is so that you could be thinking about the possibilities along with learning about what a, a mini lecture is. Okay, so mini lectures are, uh, should be 15 to 20 minute recordings that can be utilized in various ways. And really folks, these should be no more than 30 minutes or if you're going to do that, you need to break them up into chunks because uh, students aren't going to listen to more than uh, a few minutes at a time. And so um, I hope you think about that when you get ready to create your lectures and, and think about how you want to utilize these tools in your classroom. Okay, so many lectures can be used in various ways, and one of those ways uh, can be used. It can be used as guides to use before assigned readings. You can guide your students through what they need to uh, be looking for in their readings. Um, you can use many lectures to supplement materials and readings, uh, much like I'm doing in this course. You can use many lectures to reinforce key concepts or themes and mini lectures can be portions of recorded traditional classroom lecture. So what that means is that if you've got snippets of recorded uh, lecture that you've done in the full classroom, you could also be 
putting those into your online classes. Uh, one of the best examples of how I've seen professors use mini lectures is uh, I was working with a criminal justice professor uh, several years ago, different campus, um, and he had some information that his textbook didn't talk about and he wanted to add it to his course. And so I'd been trying to get this gentleman to do mini lectures for a while and it was my perfect opportunity to talk to him about doing these recordings. And so um, his textbook did not cover railroad police and he wanted students to know that railroad police is a full police force and that they are set up much like any other command post and so uh, or co uh, command structured um, entity and so he was able to add that information into a mini lecture over the chapter and he quizzed his students over this topic and it was important for him to let students know that railroad police is what it is because we have folks in this nation that are reading that are writing Amtrak and uh, working for different railroad systems and those railroad police have the same um, rights they work under the same rules that uh, any rail uh, any police department works under and so a lot of folks don't understand how railroad police works and he wanted his students to know that and so that's what he did um, how he used it to supplement his textbook all right so mini lectures can be used um, in place of full lecture recordings and should be because students like to watch shorter videos uh, they are more usable on computers and mobile devices so many many of these mini lectures can be uh, uh, utilized on mobile devices and so I think that's exciting to know that our students are using our mobile devices to be learning our content. Um, also, usually mini lectures are easier to edit and format and create uh, and add captioning to. What's the purpose? Okay, so why are we talking about this? Um, they are great for online learning to be used in lecture and can be used instead of lecture in the flipped classroom model. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, there's a flip model out there that talks about doing your rec recording your lectures and putting them online and then having your student uh, time with the time with your students for activities and uh, answering questions and stuff like that. So the students would watch lecture online and then when they go to the classroom they would have more interaction with you as your faculty member. Um, they can it can be used in various ways I think I talked about this earlier as reinforcement of the re lectures and readings in a web enhanced class uh, so you know folks miss class and so they can uh, get back on they can get it to the online recordings and and uh, reinforcement of the of the readings for your web enhanced class many times uh, these lectures can be accessed with smartphones iPads and computers often I hear this word anytime any device access I kind of question that but it does give our students uh, more opportunity than they've ever had before to get to our lectures. Okay, so before I leave you about with these mini lectures, there's a couple of pieces of advice I don't want to give you. Um, it's in very important for you to remember this. If you want students to read your textbook, don't lecture over the entire chapter. Okay? Um, the next thing is, write a script of your lecture or at least write talking points this helps keep you on track uh, and keeps your train of thought when you're recording um, you notice if there's times when I struggle when I move away from my script lecture uh, and improvise 
I'm not a good improviser. And most folks aren't. Okay, that is mini lectures. Uh, in a nutshell, I will see you in the next module. I hope you begin to get excited about the possibilities of uh, creating your mini lectures. And uh, again, you're going to get directions on about how to do that in your final project. Have a great day.